Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Zim Integrated Shipping Services Limited, ticker symbol ZIM, Zim. We're looking at Zim today because this was the most popular business that we looked at in 2022. And right now, based off a special dividend that Zim paid out in 2022, the company has a 160% dividend yield, which is probably the highest dividend yield in the entire stock market. Even though that one-time dividend is most likely not to be repeated, as freight rates have declined significantly over the past year, Zim's management have still said that they want to pay out 30 to 50% of their income over this period as dividends, so Zim still has the potential to be a very high-paying dividend stock, and it's an asset light business that charters the majority of its vessels. Since we last looked at the business, Zim's stock price has continued to decline, and that was even with these high dividend payouts. So we want to understand what are we missing, what could the market have possibly discovered about this business in this past year that's led to this negative performance for Zim? And does Zim offer any sort of big potential upside? So right now the company is trading for $17.19 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is down 70%. However, even with this huge decline, since the company was publicly listed just about two years ago, Zim stock price is still up 50%, so they're still compounding at a rate of 23% annually. Keep in mind, again, that this is not including their dividend payouts, and Zim has returned more than its entire market cap in dividend payments to shareholders alone in these past two years. So even with these declines, shareholders in Zim have likely outperformed the market by quite a bit. So right now, Zim is trading about a dollar above their 52-week low. They're down more than $60 from their 52-week high. Currently, 12% of the company's shares outstanding are sold short, and Zim has about a $2 billion market cap. For additional background about the business, Zim Integrated Shipping Services Limited is an asset light container liner shipping company. It offers tailored services including land transportation and logistics services, specialized shipping solutions including the transportation of out of gauge cargo, refrigerated cargo, and dangerous and hazardous cargoes. Its services include cargo services, digital services, schedules, and shipping trade and lines. Geographically, it derives a majority of its revenues from the Pacific. As of the end of 2021, Zim operated a fleet of 118 vessels, which contained 110 container vessels and 8 vehicle transportation vessels, of which only 4 vessels were owned and 114 vessels are chartered in. The company was incorporated in 1945 and is headquartered in Haifa, Israel. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of 6 standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Zim based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still an evolving process, it's a work in progress, and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%, and there are two key reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital, and the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. So Zim has only been public for about two years, however, we still have data on their return on capital numbers, and we can see that their returns on capital have been pretty much in sync with the freight rates over this period. So as these shipping rates went up, Zim's return on capital also went up. This is likely due to the nature of their business, having these short and medium term charters. Zim has really earned incredible returns on capital since the COVID-19 pandemic. In fiscal 2020, they earned 33% returns on capital. In 2021, it was 72% returns on capital. And that's where they've been at. And they've also earned about 72% returns on capital over their last 12 months as well. So averaged out over this period, over these last five fiscal years, Zim is earning about a 25% average return on capital. However, keep in mind that this is very lumpy over this period, but this is a check on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. In addition to this, we'll be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations. So over this time, on the back of these increased rates, Zim's revenues have more than quadrupled. When we look at their net incomes, they barely had positive earnings in 2017, and they had negative earnings in 2018 and 2019. However, over their last 12 months, Zim has produced a massive $5.9 billion worth of earnings, which is more than their market cap and their total enterprise value right now. And as a good sign for the business, they've been cash flow positive in all five of these years. And the business has earned about $6.5 billion worth of free cash flow over their last 12 months alone. 
This is massive growth here for Zim. This is a huge check on metric number two. And so far, a lot of the growth in the return on capital numbers that we've seen for this business have a lot to do with the cyclical and commoditized nature of the industry that Zim is in. So it's worth being aware that the containerized shipping industry is prone to these boom and bust cycles. And there's a lag time between when supply is able to come online to meet demand, as it takes multiple years for container vessels and ships to be built. Additionally, because of this lag time and these boom and bust cycles, there have been multiple periods throughout the industry's history where there have either been huge over investments of capital or huge under investments of capital that have contributed to these upsized booms and busts as well. That's something worth being aware of industry-wide. And that's likely played a very significant role in Zim's recent strong performance. Next up for metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. So with Zim's earnings being up pretty massively, we just want to check out what their shares outstanding have done over this time as well. So Zim has diluted existing shareholders by about 20% over this period. Even though they were publicly listed about two years ago, they issued the majority of these shares between fiscal 2020 and fiscal 2021. However, because of their massive earnings growth, Zim has produced about $49 of earnings over their last 12 months. This is still up massively, and this is another check here on metric number three. Next up, metric number four is going to be very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. With their huge growth in their free cash flows, their free cash flows per share are up as well. Over their last 12 months, Zim has earned more than $54 per share worth of free cash flow. Again, this looks pretty ridiculous to their current market cap. However, keep in mind that Zim has paid out a large amount of these free cash flows, more than 50% of them as a large dividend payment last year, which is why Zim currently has a 160% last 12 months dividend yield. Again, though, this is a check on metric number four, and through our first four metrics, we are perfect so far for Zim, four for four. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that Zim has produced over the last five years. So Zim had negative net debt to end 2021, meaning that they had leftover cash after paying off all of their debt. However, right now Zim has about one and a half billion dollars worth of net debt as they paid out this cash in dividends. However, over this last five-year period, Zim has earned about $6.6 .6 billion worth of free cash flow, which is more than enough to be able to comfortably support this net debt position. And again, different than their earnings, Zim has had positive free cash flows in all five of these years. So based off Zim's abilities to produce free cash flows, it looks like they're able to comfortably support this net debt position and support their goal of paying out 30 to 50% of their free cash flows as dividends. So this is another check here on metric number five, and we are still perfect five checks through our first five metrics. One thing to be potentially leery of and to keep an eye on is that Zim's total liabilities are greater than their total current assets. So that could send a different message about some of the economic strength of this business. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially give us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Zim. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's going to give us a picture of the economic reality of the business that's going to be more similar to as if Zim were a private company. So Zim right now has about a $3.6 billion total enterprise value, and we learned that over the last five years, they produced $6.6 .6 billion worth of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, Zim is producing about $1.3 billion worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $1.3 billion of their average free cash flow by their $3.6 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 36% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Zim which is a staggering amount over that 5% yield. This is another big check on metric number six, meaning that Zim has done it. They've gone a perfect six for six on our select six analysis. Also, again, over their last 12 months, Zim has produced $6.5 billion worth of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $6.5 billion of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $3.6 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a 180% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Zim which again is astounding as they produce more free cash flow over the last year alone than what the business is currently being valued at by the market. However, there are some potential reasons for this as freight and shipping rates have come down quite dramatically, falling by more than 80% from their highs in 2021. So even though we're looking at Zim's past performance here, as investors, what we really care about is what the business is likely to do in the future. And it seems like this industry has gone through a very boom period 
while these rates still might be above where they were prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, they are down quite dramatically from where they were at their peak. And so to really have an informed opinion about what Zim is likely to do as a business going forward, you'd really want to understand the industry that they're in and where they potentially stand within that boom and bust commoditized cycle. So again, just because Zim goes six for six here doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go buy this business. This analysis is not financial advice and it's meant to be taken in holistically. These metrics are simple, but when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. And we're not done quite yet. So as a bonus, here we're taking a look at Zim's dividend profile. Again, because of a one-time catch-up dividend payout in 2021, Zim right now has a trailing dividend yield of 160%, which is likely the highest dividend yield of any company in the entire stock market. <clears throat> However, these dividends are not likely to be repeated going forward into the future, as Zim has a stated goal from management of paying 30 to 50% of their earnings out as dividends going forward, which would be more similar to a lot of their other shipping peers. Even with that being the case, though, it does look like Zim's cash flows are able to support their dividend payouts, and it doesn't look like management would be doing anything overly foolish with how they're paying out dividends versus how they're bringing in cash flows. One thing to note here about their dividend yield as well is that right now, analysts are projecting that their next 12 months worth of dividends are only going to yield about 6.4% based off of the company's current stock price. That again is down quite dramatically, even from what this yield was being projected at in November of 2022. And again, it's nowhere near that 160% last 12 month dividend yield. Here to provide a little more context about Zim's business, we're looking at the Freitos Baltics Index, the FBX, which is the Global Container Freight Index, and we get a really good perspective of how these freight rates have dropped so dramatically over the last year and a half or so. For 40-foot containers, they peaked at $11,000 in September of 2021, and currently as of the end of 2022, they're now at $2,200. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, however, they were not above $2,000. Coming into 2020, they were at about $1,500. And in March of 2020, they dropped to about $1,400. So they were up nearly eight times within just a year and a half. And again, even though they've fallen quite dramatically from their highs, they're still above where they were prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. So in summary, Zim checks the box on six out of our six metrics, meaning that they are a perfect select six stock. However, as a caveat, due to the cyclical and commoditized nature of their industry, it's often the case that these businesses, when they're in their boom cycles, can look very cheap on a number of quantitative metrics. Whereas when they're in the troughs of their busts, these businesses can look very expensive on these same valuation metrics. So it's really important to do your own homework. With that being said, over the last five years, Zim has averaged about 25% average returns on capital over this time. We have this data even though they've been public for only two years here. Their revenues have quadrupled, their earnings and free cash flows are up massively, with them producing earnings and free cash flows that are greater than their entire market cap and enterprise value over the last year alone. Even with 20% dilution, they're up on per share metrics as well. Something notable about Zim that puts it above its peers is that over all five of these years, Zim has produced positive free cash flows, which means that even with the $1.5 billion net debt position they have right now and Zim's plans to pay out dividends in the future, it looks like they'd be able to support their debt loads. Because of some of the skewing on their valuation metrics, it looks like Zim has an absolutely massive free cash flow to enterprise value yield on both a current and an average basis. And while it appears that Zim has a 160% dividend yield, that's from their trailing last 12 months worth of numbers. Again, in a large part, that was due to a one-time dividend payment that even though it was technically not a special dividend, is not likely to be repeated. And management has a stated goal of paying dividends that are more in line with Zim's peers going forward. So please be mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Zim. There are some strong articles that you can read to get deeper backgrounds about the there's some there are some strong articles that you can read to get a deeper background about the business, including one write-up on Value Investors Club and also some articles on Seeking Alpha. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. 
These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your rating experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make research searching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct your research into a business as if you're going to own 100% of it, and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that business and understand what's important and what's not important for the company going forward, ultimately coming to understand the underlying essence of the business. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Zim, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Zim Integrated Shipping Services Limited, ticker symbol ZIM. Again, we we looked at Zim today as an update to our most popular business from 2022 and their stock price has declined pretty significantly from when we last evaluated the business. Some of their numbers for their dividend yield might be potentially giving investors the wrong impression of the company going forward. And it seems like because of the asset light nature of their business and because most of their vessels are chartered, that Zim was a significant beneficiary of rising shipping and freight rates, and that things have been somewhat difficult for the business on the way down. Although again, many of these rates remain elevated from where they were prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's possible that these businesses would still be performing well going into the future. That's ultimately something that you're just going to have to learn for yourself through deeper research into the business and a deeper understanding of where the shipping industry is at in their boom and bust cycle. So if you enjoyed today's video and or you learned something, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about our update on Zim with me and have a great day.